Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Uh, part two of our service on the Sabbath, December 17th, 2011, and it's been very difficult getting this video out today. Uh, we're using the Android phone, as you know, and uh, Satan likes to cause interference. He does not want this service on the Sabbath, and especially this message on the book of Revelation, how close we are to the rapture of the church, to come out. This is like, I don't know how many takes that we've had to do or something has went wrong. We've prayed about this, and uh, we're going to carry on. We are going to carry on, and we will not be defeated. This is a very important teaching, a very important message on the book of Revelation. I'm going to show you, uh, by breaking down the book of Revelation verse for verse, that there is, there is, beloved, a pre-tribulation rapture. How many seals have been opened and how close we are today, December 17th, 2011. How close we are uh, to the church being taken. We're going to continue where we left off last uh, service on the Sabbath, last week uh, from Revelation 1. And you can follow along with your Bible if you uh, desire, or just sit back and listen. We're going to uh, backtrack just a little bit to uh, Revelation 1, verse 12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Now we understand from last week's service, we are the lampstand. And we see the number seven quite often. In a moment, we're going to talk about the seven stars in his right hand. The seven churches, and we discussed that. They're not seven separate buildings. They are the people. They are where the gospel has spread. We have seven seals, seven trumpets, seven trumpet judgment, seven, seven. The number seven is a very, very heavenly, heavenly, holy number in the heavenly realm. Let's continue. And among the lampstands, we are the lampstands, and this is the vision given to John, was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest, his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire, his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all his brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet, as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. Very important. What is now, and what will take place later. John, when he had the vision, was under a great... He was in tribulation. He wasn't in the great tribulation that we're about to face now. But he was in tribulation. He was in his 80s to early 90s at the time of uh, this writing and his vision. And he was in prison. He was imprisoned. Write, therefore, what you have seen. What is now, at this time, and at that time we talk about the seven churches, not seven buildings. That's how far the gospel had spread at that time. And we are the church. So the seven places that the gospel had spread. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstand is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now we all, and I believe we all have our own guardian angel. But for now, here we are today, 2011, and look how far the gospel of Jesus Christ has spread. And for each territory, there is an angel assigned. There is one angel assigned for each place around the world that this gospel, not the church, not that 
501c3 building that we get all dressed up and we go to on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's not the church. We are the church. It was never Yeshua, it was never Jesus' uh, gospel to go and put up a mortar and brick building and call it a church. It's to spread the word of salvation. So for as far as the gospel has spread, that's what represents the seven stars held in his right hand. There is an angel appointed, assigned over each location, each church. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and on the seven go and of the rather seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, as I just explained. And the seven lampstands are the body or the seven churches, which represents us. Now, I don't want to go through um, the message given to each and every one of the churches where, when it begins, because we are the church, remember, these are not, you know, there's no, he's not, we're not speaking of, like, to the church of Philadelphia. We're not talking about Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're speaking about the body. We are the body. We are the body. We are the church. And where the gospel has spread. But, let me read just for one moment. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. He holds the angels in his hand that are to minister and that are to give guidance over the church. That's us. And he walks among us. We are the lamps. We are the uh, we are the lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your preser and your per uh, perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. And it goes on and to, as he talks to each of the bodies, the church where the gospel has spread. But he has this against you, each and every one of you. Whether it be um, worshiping idols or, or the material things of the world. We're not perfect. And he's trying to show us the error of our ways. But when we're talking about the rapture of the church, and I, you know, I'd like to get into this in a little more great detail because this we talk about once saved, always saved, and it's covered in great detail. Uh, when we uh, hear the word given to the seven churches. But we don't have time uh, in this presentation. But for those of you that uh, maybe are not uncertain about uh, the rapture of the church, when we uh, go to uh, the church in Philadelphia, there's one just one uh, section I want to read, and that's uh, Revelation 1, uh, verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, and again, it's not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. What he opens, no one can shut. What he opens, what door he opens, no, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know you have very little strength. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Now listen very closely. Since you have kept my command patiently, I will also keep you from the hour. I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. And we will continue. We will continue next week, which will actually be Christmas Eve. And I'm going to skip a little, little bit ahead next week, and we are going to get into the seven seals. And stay tuned for part three, communion, and we will conclude for this week. Shabbat Shalom.